Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk a little bit about WWV. WWV is a time and frequency station <clears throat> run by the United States Department of Commerce um, through its uh, organization called NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology. And uh, WWV consists of two stations, one in Fort Collins, Colorado, and one in Hawaii. It broadcasts on a variety of frequencies from 60 kilohertz, that's right, just 60 kilohertz, but also at 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz. And the original point of the station many years ago was to transmit a time signal that could be used for synchronization throughout the United States, used by ships at sea, and so on and so forth. In addition in, to the time and uh, frequency signals that it puts out, it also every so often will transmit at certain defined minutes after the hour uh, storm warnings and uh, uh, propagation warnings, geos, uh, uh, geomagnetic storms, and things like that. So it's quite an interesting radio station. It also is, and it's it's uh, various frequencies, 25, uh, you know, tw um, 2.5, 5, and 10 uh, megahertz. Those frequencies that it transmits on are by definition correct. In other words, when WWV transmits on 10 megahertz, it's using the, the National Atomic Clock to get its actual synchronization so that, by definition, it's on 10 uh, megahertz. If it seems off of 10 megahertz, check your radio because MF, or, uh, WWV is correct on those frequencies. Now, the question from Albert, N3XEI, is this. Sometimes he will hear the Hawaiian station uh, give its uh, information. Uh, this is WWVH in uh, Hawaii, wherever it is in Hawaii. And uh, then there's a voice announcement. The, the announcement from the Hawaiian station is in a female voice, and the one from the Fort Collins station is in a male voice. Now, what he points out is he will hear the one in Hawaii several seconds prior to the one in Fort Collins. And he asks, isn't something weird going on? I mean, shouldn't these be right on top of each other? Well, yes and no. The frequencies are right on top of each other. But the Hawaiian broadcaster gives an ID before the Fort Collins broadcaster. So if you happen to be in a situation where you are hearing both, you'll hear the Hawaiian one first and then the Fort Collins one second. Uh, the actual time hacks will be right on top of each other. Now, <clears throat> we know that in one second, a light wave can travel around the Earth seven and a half times. Okay, so these are transmitting radio waves which travel at the speed of light. They do bounce off the ionosphere and so on. So because of the wonky things that the ionosphere does, it means that uh, the time signals from WWV and WWVH are no longer considered the best reference in the world. And now other stations send out time and frequency transmissions too. Uh, Canada, uh, does it, uh, Japan does it, uh, countries in Europe do it, they'll send these out. But what gives you far, far better timing is GPS. Uh, GPS satellites are synchronized to the Naval Observatory clock. The Naval Observatory clock in Washington uh, is constantly checking its time against NIST in Fort Collins, Colorado. Now, the WWV time, or uh, the NIST time, actually, is uh, considered legal civilian time. Okay, so if 
somebody dies at the stroke of midnight, but it was one second after WWV, well, they technically died on the next day, you see, because uh, that's just the way civil time works in the United States. In every state, it is synchronized to WWV and to the NIST clocks. Now, GPS time is synchronized to the Naval Observatory clock. We are the only nation on Earth who thinks that we need both the military and the civilian time. So they're actually calculated slightly differently from each other. There will be a difference between the two in nanoseconds, uh, but they're pretty carefully synchronized together. Now, time and frequency is very interesting. I used to know one of the scientists, Dave Allen, who worked at NIST in the time and frequency division and uh, learned a lot of things about time. I've uh, read books about it and so on. It's not always exactly riveting reading to read NIST standards, but uh, it is quite interesting. Um, there is an agreement around the world as to what time it is. And that time is universal time, UT. Now, there are several different kinds of time. There is a time that is the standard atomic clock, it's TAI, which is the international atomic second. It's from a cesium clock. And the length of the second is defined in terms of atomic clocks. Now, I learned this from Dave Allen when he went to, and I can just tell you, the th it's a thrill a minute, to go to the International Consultative Committee on the Definition of the Second. <laughs> but I guess there are little vagaries having to do with cesium clocks. For one thing, there's jitter in there because um, of the way it's done, it'll declare the second. Over time, it averages being exactly right. Uh, the clocks that are on board the GPS satellites are actually rubidium clocks, which, although they don't have the long-term stability, have much better short-term stability. So all of this is managed internationally, actually, um, by uh, the... Uh, organization that, that handles these sorts of things and I'm not sure if it's part of the UN it's probably part of the International Telecommunications Union. As we get more sophisticated with our telecommunications our need for accurate time gets higher and higher and higher. The cell phone time that you get is extremely accurate within a few microseconds of uh, UTC or UT. Now I told you there were different kinds of time. Uh, UT, there's a UT1, a UT2, and a UTC. Uh, uh, the international coordinated time is set so that each second boundary falls in the same time as TAI, which is International Atomic Time. The acronyms are in French. The uh, time for the, uh, the second always lines up on the second. Now that creates a problem because there's also astronomical time. This is the time based on the rotation of the Earth. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to rotate back to where it was with reference to the sun. Now there is something called sidereal time where it's the actual time to do one full revolution, but it does one full revolution. Meanwhile, the Earth has moved in, with reference to the sun. So a day is from noon to noon. It's not from midnight to midnight. It's from noon to noon. And that can be very precisely determined, and that is the job of the Greenwich Observatory in London, okay, is to figure out astronomical time and that's sometimes called GMT or Greenwich Mean Time or whatever. And there's an equivalent UT for that that's just a little bit off from that. But the point is that the Earth isn't terribly dependable. The Earth wobbles on its axis. It's called precession. And because of that, no two days 
are the exact same length. So what they have to do is keep, if you take true astronomical time, you're going to have to adjust it by a second or two every day. Okay, so uh, universal coordinated time uses the TIA second boundary, but it adds leap seconds as the Earth gradually slows, and it's gradually slowing. And so every December 31st, they'll look to see if they need to add a second to get the times better lined up. There's an interesting little feature of WWV on the hour. It will give you the time, and then it'll give short beep, 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 beep like that. And that will tell you how many tenths of a second UTC is off from astronomical time. And it's never allowed to be more than one second off. Now, the Earth in general is slowing down. So the second gets a little longer, so we keep adding leap seconds. If we need an extra one, it goes in at midnight, June 30th, just before July. Okay, And it's kind of weird that WWV and the clocks that are synchronized to WWV, instead of going up to 59 and then going to 60, or I'm sorry, instead of going to 59 and then to uh, zero, they'll go 59, 60, and then to zero. Now recently here the Earth, as I said, it wobbles. Uh, there's some thought that they're going to have to subtract a second from time, which they can do too. And all the clocks, like I've got a little GPS clock right here, all the clocks are set up to stay in sync. Because if you've got, for example, a banking transaction, um, a few tenths of a second prior to midnight, by the time that banking transaction hits the Pacific Coast, you want it on the same day. Okay, you can handle being an hour off for the time zone, but to be the next day, that gets a little weird. So time, extremely accurate time, has to be distributed through the world. And I should mention, yes, the GPS satellites do have to deal with relativistic effects of their motion around the Earth. So that gets to time. Now, that was making a rather large discourse out of his question of why does he hear Hawaiian time before he hears Fort Collins time. It is the same time, it's just that the Hawaiian time is announced first. So if all you're hearing is Hawaiian time, you are going to get the announcement followed by several more clicks while Fort Collins does its thing. And then you get the beep to indicate the top of the hour. Time is a very, very interesting subject because what we have used for millennia as the definition of noon, which is the sun directly overhead, uh, this doesn't work in modern society. The first big change came with the railroads because each town in the U.S. prior to the railroads, so we're talking the early 1820s, 1830s, 1840s, there would usually be in every city a jeweler, because they'd set the watches, um, who had an observatory or something to measure exactly noon, and then the local clock would be put at noon. Everything is measured from noon to noon. And the problem was that when the railroad started to come through, every town had its own time. And that just played havoc with railroad times. In fact, there is a picture in Philadelphia of um, the main town clock with two minute hands. One was for local time, the other was for railroad time. And the railroads finally persuaded the Congress to set up the time zones that we know today. And so you've got... Um, Eastern time zone, if you get up into Maine and Nova Scotia, there's a time zone prior to that. And then so you get Eastern, Central, uh, Mountain, and Pacific, and a few more time zones later, you get to Hawaiian. The rest of the world is all set up in coordination 
with these time zones. However, in some places, they don't like to be on the same hour as uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And so they might be 30 minutes off. They'll just move their definition of the time. All of India is on one time zone, and it's 30 minutes off from UTC. Other places are 15 minutes off or 45 minutes off. And so, and then we have to decide when the date changes. In the Pacific Ocean, there's a great big um, uh, date, the, the international date line. And so in Australia, it is about 12 hours difference from us. So it's about one o'clock in the morning. Okay, tomorrow. It's already tomorrow there. The new day starts at the international dateline, sweeps all the way around the world till it hits the international dateline again. So if you're working with a company that's in Australia, they'll call you Sunday night and you go, wait a minute, it's my weekend. No, it isn't, it's Monday. So <laughs> quite crazy. So that's the answer. The answer to his very simple question. Why is, why do I hear WWVH before I hear WWV? And that is because the WWVH announcement is made several seconds prior to the Fort Collins announcement so that the two won't be on top of each other. And then you can get the same uh, tick for the new time. So there you have it, time, all kinds of fun. Never knew it was that complicated, did you? Well. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please subscribe. Please click like. And um, if you have any questions, send them to hamradioanswers at gmail.com or you can send them to Ask Dave, all one word, at uh, arrl.org uh, for consideration for the column uh, in QST because I now do the Ask Dave column every month in QST. So thanks for subscribing, thanks for clicking like, and until we next meet, 73.